the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That gradual, that gospel woke you up. We plan these things in advance. In the 17th century, the Reverend Thomas Bailey died, and his parishioners put the following epitaph on his headstone. Here lies ye precious dust of Thomas Bailey, a painful preacher. <laughs> now, the word painful has gone through a few changes since the 17th century. A painful preacher wasn't one who willingly afflicted his congregation as I do, but one who was painstaking in the crafting of sermons. I will meet my demise in the 21st century, and if anyone writes on my headstone that I was a painful preacher, I will come back and haunt them. <laughs> a century later, the Reverend Basilio Paneo of Milford, Connecticut, had this inscribed on his headstone. During his ministry, he enjoyed seven revivals, admitted 716 members, baptized 1,117 persons, and buried 1,126 members of his flock. This tells me that the Reverend Basalil either died immediately after preparing his annual report for the bishop, <laughs> or he missed his true calling as an accountant. <laughs> the Reverend Hiram Snow was remembered this way. Here lies the Reverend Hiram Snow. Where he's gone, we do not know. <laughs> if haply to the realms above, then farewell happiness and farewell love. If haply to a lower level, give our condolence to the devil. <laughs> the Reverend Hiram Snow does not appear to have been especially popular in his congregation. So this painful Lenten sermon begins with epitaphs because they say when you want to change your life, when you want to reassess the road you're on as it challenges us to do, one of the useful things that you can do is write your own obituary, which has always seemed to me to be a terrible idea. Nevertheless, even if you've not undertaken that particular exercise, we know that life is brief. We know that our transients can provide an incentive to live well. Sometimes the way forward into a better future begins with discomfort. And I wonder here living in Mexico, if every Dia de los Muertos isn't a sort of communal memento mori, remember that you must die. I wonder if that is not sort of like writing your one and personal obituary. Dia de los Muertos is certainly more fun than writing your own obituary. We're not told why Abram left Haran for a wandering life at age 75. We're not told what drove Nicodemus under cover of darkness to seek out the Christ. We are told that both men were accomplished and successful in their generation. Now, Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold, says Genesis. When Abram left Haran, it took a caravan to transport Sarai, his wife, Lot, his nephew, and all of the possessions and servants they had acquired. We are often counseled to travel light. Abram did not travel light. 
We know a bit about Nicodemus too. He was part of the aristocracy, affluent, well-educated, a member of the Sanhedrin. Senator Nicodemus, we might say, or Nicodemus CEO. Yet both men were dissatisfied with life as they knew it, and they sensed, even if they couldn't quite put a name to it, the promise of something deeper to be laid hold of. Abram knew, and Nicodemus seems half aware, that they can't continue on as they have if they are yet to lay hold of life's promise. The anxiety they feel fomenting change within them has planted seeds of hope, but they know there's a price to be paid. Change is hard. It's hard to leave behind the home you have made and strike out from unknown lands as Abram did and as many of us fully understand. And it's just as hard to leave behind homey ways of thinking, which was Nicodemus' challenge. Change is hard for any of us. We often manage anxiety by trying to keep change at bay, trying to reinforce a zone of familiarity and safety and security. Safety and security are reasonable things to want, but they shouldn't be our ultimate goal. And they can become an anesthesia masking the need for struggle. We develop habits that keep us from disturbance and from the hard work of reflection. If you're like me, you tend to nod in internal agreement with whatever fits into your theological or political home, the one that you have built for yourself, and shake your internal head in disagreement with those things that don't fit your template. It's human nature to resist new thoughts, which is why we're told that the divine word will often upset us. That's why Jesus told so many parables, letting the truth of what he said ambush people before they could raise up their defense systems. Similis, another aristocrat, a Praetorian prefect under the emperor Hadrian, had this inscription placed on his tomb. Here lies Similis, who existed 64 years and lived seven. <laughs> Neither Abram nor Nicodemus wanted to settle for that inscription. Both Abram and Nicodemus realized they could no longer stay in the place that they had come to call home. And perhaps this Lent, something of the same realization is coming for you. Perhaps you feel a pull to change some aspect of your life though you may be as puzzled as Nicodemus over how to do that. Maybe you have felt this pull previously and have opted to stay in Haran. Or you have made yourself as comfortable as possible on the Sanhedrin, which does have its compensations. But now the nagging has returned, and it occurs to you one day that dissatisfaction can be an expression of the voice of God. Abram and Nicodemus each came to grips with the voice of God. Abram made physical departure the way a person must from an emotionally abusive relationship, an oppressive church, from unethical or slothful patterns of life, or from a hated job. Nicodemus stayed where he was. He didn't change jobs but he changed internally. The man who came to Jesus under cover of darkness transformed into the man who defended Jesus before the Sanhedrin and arrived in broad daylight to help prepare the Lord's body for burial. The epistle to the Hebrews says, by faith Abraham went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Faith is that thing 
which gives us courage to change even when we have no idea where we are going. It never ended for Abram. Every time he settled into a new place, which he thought might be his permanent home, God called him to move on. He is transformed by the process. His name was once Abram, and his wife's name Sarai, and he comes to be called Abraham, and his wife comes to be called Sarah. Perhaps safety and security are not appropriate abodes for human beings, and perhaps God intends us always, even at 75, to venture forth in faith, perhaps to a new destination, but always to new ways of thinking. Christ says to Nicodemus, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, and you do not know where it goes. So it is for everyone born of the Spirit. So Jesus seems to be encouraging Nicodemus and you and me to let the mystery in and not to try too much to batten down the hatches and dot all the I's and cross all the T's. He seems to want us to leave room for adventure and freedom in the spirit. Maybe God will give you a new name as God did for Abraham and Sarah. They call me Padre Jorge down here often. They did not call me that in San Marino, California. God may name you bold, where you have been timid, reliable, where you have been inconstant, kind, where you have been hurtful, happy, when you have been too long sad. What new tent does God have for you if you will only leave Haran? And if you leave your Haran, you will find that your confidence is no longer in Haran, but in God who leads you and who is in the end our only true home. God has prepared a place for us tomorrow and the day after, even if we don't yet know that place ourselves. And the more willing we are to leave the places in which we have become too settled, the, home, the more at home in our own skin we will feel, the more confident that God will provide an eternal home for us at the end of our journey. When Thomas Wolfe, author of the endless book, Look Homeward Angel, when Thomas Wolfe lay dying in August of 1938 at the age of 38, he wrote this, something has spoken to me in the night and told me that I shall die. I know not where, saying, to lose the earth you know for greater knowing, to lose the life you have for greater life, to leave the friends you have and love for greater loving, to find a home more kind than home, more large than earth, whereon the pillars of this earth are founded. Abraham and Nicodemus remind us that there is a better land than the country of safety and security and that we need to set out by faith and venture forth daily with God, with the wind at our backs, making us to be born from above, over and over and over again. And here ends a painful sermon.